Tony and Errol, gentlemen's hairdressers. One of them actually said that the way to improve Britain is to get children to be taught how to be British in schools. And you think, how can you teach Britishness? How do you turn a nationality into an equation? Was it Great Britain equals money over principle times arrogance? That's all you need to know. <laughs> how do you test if someone is British? Do you take them out to Corfu for a week? And if after a week they're not pissing blood, foreign. What do you do? Do you, have, do you have a huge written exam, big written examination all about British culture, British leisure, British pastime, British history, and if you fail it, British. <laughs> Dad, I failed my British exam. I'm proud of you, son. They can take away your job, they can take away your house, they'll never take away your ignorance, boy, you're British. <laughs> my boy is so thick, he could be thick for Britain. <laughs> Where'd you come from, boy? <laughs> Welcome aboard the Scandal Tour. Around each site you will meet a symbol, and that symbol will tell you roughly what the scandal is. It's either sex or money. So here it is. This is the employment agency for rich people. That's what it is. Margaret Thatcher used to live there. She, she used to drink there a lot. Now it's here that the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Norman Lamont, hired flat out to a prostitute. She then uh, had to be evicted, and what she did was he used public money to get rid of her. As you can see, there is some form of confrontation taking place right now uh, over this, and um, oh, she's been dragged away. Now, can you imagine what would the person look like if Bella Lugosi and Dickie Davis somehow had a child? Do you want to pass that round? Could you pass that round? Do you all know who Bella Lugosi is? Here we are. This is what that person would look like. Then you look at our great symbols, you know. We're supposed to be this nation of patriots, so what do we do with our Union Jack? Turn it into a pair of boxer shorts, dribble, piss and fart in the fucker. That's what we do. You know, we've got the Lion of England. Since when have lions been indigenous to England? If they were, in Yorkshire, you get lion breeders clubs. Recent lion, is this? What do you feed him? Anything he wants. <laughs> you see, the way that you look at, you look at, you know, all the symbols, all the things that we have of our nationality. How do we prove our love? And you, and you get this, you know, you get this, let's put the great back into Great Britain, which I've never heard anywhere else. I've never heard, let's put the ooh in Peru. Yeah. <laughs> let's put the we in Sweden. <laughs> let's put the sofa back into the United States, sofa America. Yeah. <laughs> This is an infamous site. This is where the Minister for the Disabled, Nicholas Scott, was involved in a car accident, thus trying to create more disabled people and do his bit. This is the child. He pinned down, he pinned down a child in between two cars um, and then ran away from the scene of the crime. You can see him running away. The woman is uh, shouting at the child and she was shouting, it doesn't matter, he's French. Money was in fact involved here because the wife of uh, Nicholas Scott sued a newspaper because it wasn't her who was in the car that Nicholas Scott ran away from. We're getting out of Ireland. Britain is leaving Ireland. We've had enough. Leave it. I'm leaving. Don't try and follow me. Leave it. I know I'm going. Keep the H blocks. I'm taking the records. Leave it. And I know we've just sent the troops in, but that's a bit of an okey cokey at the moment. <laughs> Send the troops in, pull them out. In, uh, uh. And the thing is, we're going to leave. And my one piece of advice to Irish people is very simple. Doesn't matter what occurs. If you keep your eye on the goal of a united and peaceful Ireland, it will happen. But if you discover oil, you keep stum. Because <laughs> Britain will be straight back in. We've forgotten our umbrella and we just need to have a look around. <laughs> look, I quite like the Ulster Unionists because they want to be British. But the best place to be British is Britain, isn't it? Being British in Ireland, not very good. <laughs> and what the Ulster Unionists do, they charge around with bowler hats and sashes and they march everywhere. They just charge around the place. Go, We're British! We are British! And that's how you behave when you're on holiday abroad. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. Wait, 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 show them your ass. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't need an army because we're leaving Ireland. We don't need an army because uh, what have we got that anyone would invade us for? What have we got? Pick and mix. Mm. <laughs> if you're worried about being invaded, you don't need an army. What you need is privet hedge all around the coastline. <laughs> No one gets through Privet, do they? <laughs> the invading army go, God, oh, God, oh, Privet. <laughs> we know the invading army wouldn't even get halfway up the beach before they met Britain's first line of defence. Oh, poo, shit, condoms, tampons. Yeah. Because <laughs> we have got so many used condoms in the sea that Catholics have to get a dispensation to go in it. <laughs> it's true. Bless me, Father, for I have swimmed. That's what I say. <laughs> We're coming up here now to... This is the house of Alan Duncan. He made a profit of £50,000 just by slipping around the rules of house purchasing in this country. As you can see, we've got sex and money here. This is where a friend of Geoffrey Archer's paid £2,000 on Geoffrey Archer's behalf to a prostitute. This is the home, here we are, of Jonathan Aitken. Um, there's lots of scandal going on. He also went out with a woman who was accused of being a prostitute. He later denied it. He said he would cut down the journalist with his sword of truth. So there we are. Let's one more time for the sword of truth. Now, this man we're about to show you, he was originally the Minister of Fun until somebody found out that his fun was something else. You can see here this is a sex symbol because it was here that David Meller, an MP, was, was actually had an affair with an actress called Antonia de Sanchez. And she was a very, very good actress because David Meller is extremely ugly. It was at this house that an MP called Stephen Milligan was found dead. He was found dead on the 8th of February 1994, two days after he actually had died, and he was found dead on his kitchen table with a plastic bag on his head and some electrical cord round his rope. At first people suspected MI5 involvement. It later found out to be a tragic, self-inflicted death. For us to show you this house, we believe, will be an act of disrespect. If you'd like to eat your satsumas now, please do. In Yorkshire, they're under possibility of, of water restrictions. Now, now is March, isn't it? So that'll be your spring slash winter season. Which will be your rainy bit, won't it? And in Yorkshire, there's a drought. Yorkshire, the arid county of Britain. Because whenever you go up to Yorkshire, it's just tumbleweed billowing across the bottom. Cactuses, blokes with sombreros going into pubs. Hey, gringo, you give me a plate of tripe and a mashy peas. <laughs> <laughs> and Yorkshire Water actually made a hundred million quid profit in six months out of a drought. I was actually in Yorkshire recently and I was in a pub and I don't drink alcohol. And a bloke said to me, what do you want to drink? I said, oh, anything, tap water. You flash fucking southern bastard. <laughs> We've got. A, we've just got a tanker of water for you. Got what? A tanker of water. We've got. A, there's a tanker of water from the people of Ethiopia. They've given. Come and have a look. There's a tanker out there. It's a gift for the people of Ethiopia to Yorkshire Water, and they've given it. And they've made a donation of this water. And we want to talk to somebody. Hiya. No. What? Don't. Don't, don't, don't what? Don't film, please, at the moment. Well, no, because we have to sort out what we're going to do with this, because we've got some people... We'll we've... turn the cameras off for a minute. Well, you see, the thing is, can I just explain? We've got the truckload of water from Ethiopia. Yeah. Don't film, please. And we need to talk to someone from the board, because we've either got to take it to somewhere where we can deliver it to the reservoir... Don't film, please. ...or we've got to dump it, because the driver's got All to go right. off. Well, let's come and talk about it. OK, lovely. Have you got your... We've got... also got a single. They've made a benefit single. Would you like to turn the cameras off, please? So just wait here, and, and I'll be, uh... I'll be after ten. Pick up a kettle, fill it up, plug it in, and boil it. Rinse the cup, clean your hands, now use the toilet. And while you...
stand there smiling Watching the golden love Right. I am not in charge. Oh, I just I've told you that. Fine, I'm just going to speak to someone who is in charge. Don't they know it's bad time in Rotherham? Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Bye-bye. And look at their slogan over there. They've got the banner here. But they don't want our water. We made a hundred million profit out of this. So you're saying, one, you don't want the water. We'll you just dump it then, is that all right? Can we get someone down to, to play them the single then? Should we have a chat? Why, why are you being so obstructive, man? I mean, this is a real beautiful gesture. You doubt the sincerity of my gesture. Steve, you're gorgeous. Do you know that, man? You're just a diamond. Well, it's obvious that Yorkshire Water don't want <coughs> my water. So I'm going to just have to get rid of it. I'm going to have to dump it a bit, so we're just going to... We're going to have to dump the water down the drain. Here we go. We're just going to have to dump it. Because if they don't want it, we'll just have to... We've tried to give them it, but we'll have to... Sorry. Tonight's show is sponsored by Tony and Errol, gentlemen's hairdressers. Tonight's show is sponsored by Tony and Errol. Cheap haircuts for OAPs every Tuesday. There's a thing called the Conditionally Exempt Works of Art list, whereby if you inherit a work of art, you get to defer paying inheritance tax by putting it on this list. That means you don't pay tax. We estimate that between half a billion quid's worth of tax is not being paid because people have put their works of art on this list. There are 15,000 items on this list, but the law is, if you have one of these items on the list, the public have got a right to see it. You or I can get to see any of these things on this list. Hello? Hello, is that Earl Haig? Yes. My name's Mark Thomas. I've got your name from the list of conditionally exempt works of art from the Inland Revenue. Yes. I was wondering would it be possible to come up and uh, see a painting that you have? Uh, wait, what, um, wait, what, uh, what group are you? Are you and where do you, you, what is your sort of as in for your your organisation that you're sort of um, has uh, uh, your your as it were part of. There's a small group of us who are very um, interested in the work of Sir William Orpen. Who? Sir William Orpen, who did the. Uh, that's right. That's theater. right. Would it be possible to to get some refreshments there at all? I mean, we're quite. Happy well, to... I know. I afraid I can't do that. You know, I um, we have no servants, no nothing in a huge house. You don't have any servants? No. Oh, dear. It's really hard. Honestly, we can't do anything like that. Because there's about 50 of us who want to come up. 50? Yes. Goodness. If we could get up for breakfast time. Breakfast time? Yes. Would that be uh, okay? Uh, the thing is that I don't do it, you see, uh, open the house to the public. I make, make... And 50 is quite a tall order because, it's, you know, it's diff difficult to... to um, so I'll arm people with, with a sort of guide and they can just go around and look at the pictures on their own. That, that's absolutely fantastic. Is there a shop 
Do you have a shop? No, no, nothing. So there's no souvenirs I, or... No, God, oh, I, I'm nothing to do with tourism here. Oh, right. Uh, the, the one other thing is we might be bringing some children. Would it be possible we, we might just bring a bouncy castle if we could inflate outside? A uh, what? Uh, well, you know those bouncy castle things? If we could just quickly inflate it outside yes. and they can just bounce on it. Oh, Lord, While, yes. while we go and inside yeah, and have it. Because they won't let gays into the army for several reasons. One is, they say, because when you're fighting, you need someone by your side who you can trust. Someone with courage, some bravery, some, someone with bottle. And that's why if I ever get in a fight, I want fighting next to me a gay transvestite. Anyone who can walk up Ballamire Street at 10.30 in slingbacks, a low-cut llama, you're going, Ooh, look at the state of her! <laughs> that is bottle. The other reason, the other reason they don't want uh, gay men in the army, I think is just normal heterosexual male fear of random sodomy. Because men have this, heterosexual men, whenever a gay guy walks in a pub, easy, watch your backs. <laughs> like they're just going to walk up and just fuck them. <laughs> easy, watch your backs, you know, they're cutting these boys. At, what? You're fucked. I've just been fucked. I can't believe it. Did you see it? He just whipped in and give me one. I can't believe it. Get out of it. Get out of it. That's twice tonight he's done me. I can't believe it. I was playing pool. I was on the blackboard. What? Get out of it. And then, Nicholas Soames, right, who's Armed Forces Minister, he actually was talking about no more gays in the army, absolutely disgusting, because they'll threaten you when you're in your slit trench. <laughs> and you just think, well, Nicholas, no one's going to threaten you with sex. <laughs> Some people on the list are more accommodating than others. We wrote to Nicholas Soames MP, Junior Defence Minister, Member of Parliament, to ask to see his three-tier mahogany buffet with partially reeded slender baluster uprights. So, myself and 70 other art lovers individually wrote in and requested to see it, and we've got a viewing sometime in May. Now, if you'd like to see a beautiful three-tier mahogany buffet table with partially reeded slender baluster upright supports, you too could write into Nicholas Soames, care of the Houses of Parliament, and ask to see it. Now, only write in if you're a genuine art lover. Now, we also found out that Sir Evelyn de Rothschild, owner of Rothschild's Bank, actually has a rather lovely Gainsborough, which myself and some friends went to see. Can I not wait here? I can't wait here, okay. So I'll just wait down there, do I? Yeah. Alright then. They're obviously trying to run a business as well, no? Oh no, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Got fortunes to make. Yeah. I'm sorry everyone, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to get to see it today, but I'm going to take the letters in so that we can try and arrange another time. Alright. Uh, have we got all the letters, everybody? Alright. What's it like? What's it like? Was it good? It's worth pieces. seeing. I would recommend to all of you to write. It is Excellent. a wonderful painting. Oh, fantastic. One against its finest. Well, we won't let us in. All right, so I'll try and get it sorted out. Glass or ring the bell. I can't deliver them. You give them to me, do I? Will you give them in? How about I to take them off them? Head of security's coming out. All right, lovely. Thank you. Can I come in? Yeah. Thank you ever so much. Thank you. There we are. All the letters delivered. And now we've just got to wait for a week or two. And then we can come and see the Gainsboroughs. Yay! Everyone, just turn round. Come on, let's do this with a minimum of fuss, everybody. Just see you soon. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Bye. If you'd like to go and see Sir Evelyn de Rothschild's Gainsborough, you can write to him, Sir Evelyn de Rothschild's, care of Rothschild's bank. Nicholas Soames has given us permission to see his splendid three-tier mahogany buffet with partially reeded slender baluster upright supports sometime in May here at Christie's. There promises to be quite a rush, so we've decided to check for punctures. <laughs> Uh, just out of interest, are there any lovers of the three-tier mahogany buffet with partially reeded slender baluster upright supports in the audience? Yes! And remember, there are no dress restrictions. <laughs>
Here we are, the Tory party are £15 million in debt and we're doing our little bit. We're collecting stuff to, to help them out. Now here's some of the things that people have donated, a porcelain cow. And we've, we've had these made specially for the... Here we are, look, this is for the Tory party, can you read that? <laughs> Hungry and second homeless. A, a, a mint tin. Blimey. Does look a bit steamy, I don't know if you can see that. Hello, is that the Conservative Party Central Office? It's Mark Thomas here from uh, the Mark I've Thomas... I've seen your programme, Mr Thomas. Nothing further to say, thank you, goodbye. I actually like Britain. I think it's a lovely place. I'm a patriot. I love Great Britain. People in it are a bit cack, but generally nice. <laughs> right, but the point is, half the people who claim to be patriots aren't. You take half the white South London white boys. Do you love Great Britain? Easy, back off. Love Great Britain. All right, slap in, easy. <laughs> Fight and die for Great Britain. Fight and die! Well, obviously not Scotland, because that's at the top, it's all a bit cold, leave it out, wouldn't be fine for them. Nor Wales either, do you know what I mean? Sheep, bar bar, sing about it in choirs, leave it out! Fight for England! Well, not north of England, that's poor, black whippets, fucking puddings, all this kind of... Bu marching for jobs, flat caps, leave it out! Fight for London! Well, you know, not north London, obviously, they're poncy. <laughs> Fight for South London! Well, not Clapham, that's a tweed, Peckham's full of gangsters, my flat! <laughs> Which doesn't constitute a country, does it? <laughs> you see, this is a weird thing. You get the, sort of like the, the real kind of, this is, this is a patriot. They'll just go, no, we're patriots. I don't want to be in Europe. Well, you are, mate. <laughs> You're in Europe. You know, Britain's part of the continent. No, I don't want to be involved in all that over there. And I, I have reserved, you know, I, I don't really want to be in Europe. I don't Britain, want Britain to be in Europe. I mean, I'm pissed off Maldens in London. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> we don't want their weird social regulations. Leave it, we're British. I don't want to be told I'm forced to work less. Leave it out. <laughs> I don't want them to pay me more money. I'm British. I've always been British. I'm always going to be fucked. <laughs> but, you know, we, we're supposed to be a nation of patriots. And you don't prove your love of your country by how much you love your country, but by how much you hate other peoples. Now, what do you think of France? Wanker's good patriot boy. <laughs> you know, you can't prove love through hatred. If you're a bloke walking down the street with your girlfriend, you can't point at other women and go, you're fat, you're skinny, your tits are too small. See how much I love you, darling. <laughs> I don't hate any country in the world. I don't hate any country, apart from Germany, which is fair. <laughs> no, it is because of the Nazi party. The Nazis said they were the greatest race in the world, everyone else was scum, therefore that gave them the moral right to kick shit out of everyone else. And that is a British idea. They stole it from us. Can you believe that? The thieving kraut bastards. <laughs> but anyway, what you should do is just play. Just muck around with living on the island, which is just tip top. Get a huge outboard motor, put it on the back of the Isle of Wight, go for trips. <laughs> you know, just potter down to the Canary Islands and try and blend in. <laughs> Everyone on Lanzarote, yes, got me qualas, quanta shit at a privet hedge. Fuck, we've been rumbled, go! The best thing we do with the Isle of Wight, we play boy racers with it. <laughs> Just pull up alongside the Jersey Island. Biddle dee 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 Wankers! <laughs> and the Jersey Island go, get the bastards, come on, get the motor out. <laughs> and they start chasing us, and we're leaning out the window of the Isle of Wight going. <laughs> and they're chasing us, and they're quite fast, but we're a bit nippy. Tuck and do a left up the Thames. We steam ahead up the Thames with the Isle of Wight. The Jersey Island following closely behind. Halfway up the Thames, the Jersey Island gets stuck. And then we call the Inland Revenue. <laughs> About 16 years ago, I used to hang out with a guy called Andy. He was a black guy. We're drinking in the pub one night, and a couple of skinheads came up. And one of them looked at Andy, because he was black. He chucked a tenner on the table and said, Start saving for your fair own. Andy picked it up and went, shit, I'll get a taxi with that. That's my Britain.